Hey, what's going on folks? It's Mike here and welcome back to my modern C++ series. In today's episode, we're going to be talking about one of the most fun C++ acronyms there is. Do you know what it is? It's Sfine. Substitution failure is not an error. Let's go ahead and just take a look at it. I know it's a mouthful and it's one of those just C++ scary things that pops up here. Um, but you don't really have to worry about it. It's really just a thing to know about that the compiler is trying to take care of you when you're using templates. How about that for definition? <laughs> so let's go down into CPP reference here into the templates page here. And I'm basically just going to search for Sfine uh, here, which the first time I heard this, I was like, oh my goodness, what other acronyms are there <laughs> in the programming world that I haven't heard of? Uh, but let's go ahead and get the page up here just so we can see it. But substitution failure is not an error. Okay, so what does this mean here? This has to deal with overload resolution when you're using like function templates or class templates. I mean, really any sort of like template thing. Um, basically, it's saying, you know, there is some order where it's going to try to find a best fit here. Okay. So I'm going to try to just demonstrate this. Um, it's not something that if you don't know, this is going to really impact your C++ um, career to some extent, I guess. Um, it's just a good thing to know that there are rules for template substitutions. Um, if you're writing a lot of templated code, then you need to understand this stuff. But um, anyways, let's go ahead and maybe just use an example just so we can see uh, what exactly uh, Sfine is uh, doing here. Um, okay, so I'll leave uh, the rule here and let's go ahead and just write an example here. Um, and basically I'm going to write some code here that just tries to show what the best uh, substitution is uh, for two uh, functions here. So um, in order to sort of uh, demonstrate this, what I'm going to do is just create, uh, we're going to use a little bit of inheritance here. So I'm going to create some structure here for a, uh, like a robot class here. Uh, and we're going to want to derive some new uh, types from the robot. Let's say we have robots that can walk, uh, a walking robot. Uh, so that'll be a type of our robot here. Uh, and let's go ahead and have a flying uh, robot here. Okay. Fly robot. Um, and then maybe we have some sort of uh, property. And this is what I'm going to use to demonstrate the substitution uh, failure thing here. Uh, some, you know, attributes here, walkable. Okay. That this walking robot can walk and this one can fly here. Now you can sort of, you know, choose how you want to do this. If you want to add this as sort of like a tag of some like capability that this walk robot versus this flying robot can do, that's totally fine here. Uh, you can turn this into an enum of some sort and, uh, you know, check what the value is and so on. Um, but anyways, this is just some something to distinguish walking robots between flying robots so that when I instantiate a template, I know which one to choose here. Okay, so that's the basic idea here. This will make more sense in a moment here. Um, okay, and now let's get to the uh, star here. Let's go ahead and write a template here. Uh, and it's going to take a class or a type name, uh, however you prefer to write it. Uh, it's going to take in our iRobot. Uh, and i here, again, I just like to put for interface um, again, but it's going to take some type of robot into this uh, function here. I'm just going to call it, you know, do something. Uh, it's going to take in our robot. Uh, let's take it in by reference. Let's be good here. Uh, and then some sort of uh, parameter here. Okay. And what this parameter is going to be doing is sort of taking in the distinguishable thing here, whether it's a walkable or flyable uh, type here. Okay. So uh, how do I handle this here? Uh, well, there's a couple of things that I can do here, um, which is basically to say I can, um, this is sort of a little trick here, uh, or I could take, okay, whatever the robot uh, type is here uh, that I'm passing in here. And actually, let, let's just make this T so we don't get uh, confused. I think that's a little bit too confusing here. Let's just put in T here. Um, but again, you know, I'm writing this with the intent of working with uh, iRobots here. And Basically, I want to see if this has something, so sort of like true or false, um, if it's like uh, walkable, uh, for instance, okay? Uh, and then otherwise, we're just going to ignore this uh, parameter here, okay? Uh, and let's just go ahead and do a standard C out. I'm going to say walkable version called here. Uh, and let's just go ahead and leave it as is here, okay? And then with our, uh, you know, whatever the type is that we called here, we can call our walk function here, okay? Uh, so let's go ahead and test this out here. Let's go ahead and create a walkable robot. And I'll go ahead and create a 
walkable robots here. I'm just going to call it W. And let's call the do something on W here. Let's go ahead and try to compile this. Uh, I could use C23, although this should work on most versions of C. I'm not doing anything too fancy here. We'll compile and run it here. Uh, let's see what happened here. Uh, and it says, okay, walk robot has no member named walk. And okay, that's fair enough. Let's go ahead and add our member walk here because this is something specific to our walking robot here. So let's go ahead and pop that in here. Um, and it looks like I specialize this just a little bit too much here. Uh, let's see, I got this undefined reference. Okay, do something. It's taking in, it's it's inferring using uh, another one of these fun acronyms, CTAD, class template argument deduction. So I didn't need to pass in that this was a walk robot, but we could do that here. Uh, let's go ahead and just put, just, just so we could see explicitly uh, what was being called in this error message, took in the walk robot, and then it said, hey, you know, do I have something walkable here, right? This This declaration type here. Um, let's see, it says undefined reference to walk robot walk here. Uh, and I do have this ability to walk here, uh, but it actually needs to do something. Uh, let's see, we need to provide an implementation here. See out uh, robot is walking. Uh, I don't know, something like that. Let's go ahead and run it here. Uh, and okay, the walkable version is called here. Okay. Um, now let's go ahead and try this with our uh, flying robot here. Okay, so let's create a flying robot. Let's see what happens here. So let's create the uh, flying robot here, which we'll call F. Uh, I'm gonna let class template argument deduction just take care of that. Okay, so let me, if you haven't seen my previous videos, CTAD class template argument deduction, or, or uh, sorry, that's for I guess that's for classes, but the same equivalent for um, functions. Uh, it's going to deduce the template arguments here that I'm passing in. Uh, let's see what happens. Let's see if we get some interesting errors here. Okay. Um, so this is telling us, and we can see where this sort of decal type thing is kind of interesting here. Um, it's saying, uh, and let's let's find where we compiled our code at the start here, just so we can get the full message here. It says, no matching function for call to do something for this uh, robot here. Um, here is the candidate that it tried. Uh, it tried to have the uh, walkable here. And then the template argument deduction slash substitution failed here. Okay. Um, so in the substitution uh, with the T type of fly robot, which again, there's our type. We try to pass it in here, fly robot. Uh, it doesn't have this, you know, walkable uh, attribute here. Okay. Uh, so what we need to do here is of course provide another template uh, that handles you know this this specific situation here, um, and that's a key here, right? This deduction or this substitution here uh, failed here. Now, uh, what's kind of interesting here is I'm going to put in this uh, template here, and we're going to do the one that handles uh, fly, okay? Uh, and we'll call this the fly version. And we'll make our robot fly. And this time I'll just add a member function ahead of time. And I'll say, okay, see out. Our robot is flying. Something like that, of that nature here. And now this should compile and run here. So uh, to kind of loop this back, what is Sphene? Substitution failure is not an error here. Um, we could basically try each of these substitutions here to see if there's a best fit, right? We have a robot that's here, but you know, as soon as one of these parameters doesn't match here, um, it's not an error here if this code would have failed here, right? Where we had the robot uh, walking or flying, right? So we're gonna find the best match here. Uh, the code's allowed to fail, but that's not going to stop the compiler, right? It's going to look for another substitution. So as we saw here, um, this was our, you know, only function that we had before. Now we have this other, you know, overloaded function here, do something with, you know, some type of robot uh, and hopefully, you know, match the fly argument here. And instead of erring out, right, maybe it found this first thing here, the first thing in what's called the overload set. Uh, instead of causing, uh, let's make this larger, a compile error, uh, that specialization is just discarded and says, okay, we can't do that. Let's try one of the other ones, okay? Right, because I've provided 
uh, you know, two versions of do something here. Now, maybe the compiler was smart enough and it does some sort of like match or whatever, but basically, uh, you know, when I have one of these instantiations, I could imagine it saying, okay, I've got a list of all the do something right somewhere in the compiler structure here. Um, and it's going to try here and say, well, if this doesn't match, then I'm going to, uh, you know, error out here. So, um, let's let's go ahead and back up for a second here and let's say if i have uh let, let's say again that i didn't provide this uh function here and let's just say i had something a little bit less specific let's get rid of that little decal type trick that i was using and we're not really using it here uh let's just call this the generic version um let's see if this works here okay because this is just going to take some kind of robot here okay now for our walking robot, we sort of have a best fit here, right? I think the compiler in its sort of overload set is going to say, hey, let's try to find a thing if there's a perfect match, right? Where we have a walking robot and it's got this walkable thing here. It should just do this one here. Uh, otherwise, you know, we've got to try something else here. Uh, one of the other arguments here. And this one, we have a default parameter here, so we don't need to specify two things here, right? That's what the equal null pointer is for. Um, okay, so let's go ahead and try to rebuild this. Let's see here. Um, now this is kind of interesting here. This is telling us, yeah, we've got a call of overload, uh, do something with our walk robot. Okay, so it is ambiguous. So uh, we don't necessarily, yeah, maybe we're not able to choose here that sort of best match here. We'd have to add some sort of other parameter here. Uh, let's just add a parameter for the sake of it, uh, int a here. Uh, and that means I'm going to have to come down here and put in like some value, even if we're not using it here, but just to make it so it's not ambiguous. Uh, and this will work here. Okay, so this will still call our generic version here. Uh, now we're calling dot fly, which isn't going to be a, uh, that's not going to work for walk, walk robot necessarily. Uh, I think this is going to air out if I get rid of this guy here. Right? It's going to tell us, yeah, we don't have a fly uh, member structure, right? Because this wasn't a match, so we try something else. But just because this wasn't a match doesn't mean we air out right there. We try all the things in our overload set. Uh, we we tr keep trying substitutions, okay? Uh, so that's the idea here. Uh, let me get rid of the generic version and uncomment out this here of uh, Sfine. Substitution failure is not an error. And if you want to go sort of down the, the rabbit hole, I mean, we're going to go to concepts uh, in an upcoming video, so stay tuned for that. You know, where this becomes a useful sort of feature is when you start applying this with different type traits. So if I wanted to check, for instance, if this type here, for instance, or, you know, part of this robot or whatever, um, had an integer value or a floating point like we looked at in the previous video, uh, those would be things that could be very, very interesting for helping decide, well, which template do we actually use here? Okay, so again, you can kind of look through the overload list and select the right specialization. So this is where the balance in the previous video comes from, uh, where I was talking just a little bit about templates, where sometimes you just want to write the free function that has the exact overload. Sometimes you want to, you know, use one of these tricks here to sort of, you know, when you write generic code, push, uh, you know, to, to use the right uh, instantiation of some function template. And eventually this is gonna get even better when you have your requires clause, when we use concepts, which is coming up in the next video. So stay subscribe for that. Um, and uh, that otherwise um, is just very explicit about what is needed to use this function template or class or whatever. So hopefully that uh, you know uncovers or unravels this acronym here. Substitution failure is not an error. It's a useful thing to know about uh, and just to sort of think how the compiler is thinking a little bit. So when you're writing generic code, you can kind of push your code again in the right direction or constrain your code uh, in the right way so that you're solving uh, problems in a generic way, but only for the subset of functions that you actually want. And especially if you have lots of specializations or templates in your code, this can again be more and more useful to understand. So with that said, folks, thanks for your time and attention. You can check out courses.mshadio as always here. I've got all the same videos here if you want to track your progress somewhere in a less, uh, or I should say a more distraction free zone or <laughs> where there's less distractions, uh, feel free to check that out. And, uh, yeah, let me know if you're using Sfine for, uh, any, you know, interesting template use cases, or if you've sort of, um, gone away from using things like enable if and type traits and all these sort of tricks and have fully gone into concepts. I'd be really, really curious to hear if it's been making your code more, uh, 
better, uh, safer in some way or more constrained um, for your use cases. So anyways, folks, with that said, I'll look forward to seeing you in the next lesson.